Social Zoom Factor, episode 267. Driving results in business these days takes something special. It's a combination of the right info and the right energy. Pam Moore has both and is here to help you avoid the pitfalls and guide your business and life by leveraging and integrating social media, powerful branding, and digital marketing. Welcome to Social Zoom Factor. Now it's time to live life zoomed. Your great idea needs a great platform to shine. The way you brand your idea can make all the difference. Small details such as your domain name matter a lot. It's your online identity, so it needs to create an impact. I've decided to brand myself using a .online domain extension. A web address as simple as pam.online will benefit my overall branding in big ways. It's short and simple, which makes it memorable. You too can build a stellar brand on a .online domain extension. Check out get.online slash Pam and use the coupon code Pam to save 90% on your domain name for the first year. Again, that's get.online Line slash Pam coupon code Pam. Hey there, Zoomers, and welcome to Social Zoom Factor. This is your host, Pam Moore. All right, today we are talking about some very important content. So I am so happy that you are here tuned in to the Social Zoom Factor podcast. Now, we're talking about trends and People usually either get really excited about trends or else they just think, you know what? I already got everything together. I know what I'm doing. Please don't move my cheese. You know, everything's going to be all right. Everything is definitely going to be all right. You got this. However, there's something different happening in 2020. And we work with brands of all sizes from small business, medium, franchise, all the way up to corporate Fortune 10 brands. And we work in industries that are sexy. We also work in industries that aren't sexy. We love working with unsexy brands and manufacturing. And I'll tell you, no matter what industry it is right now, marketers are leveling up their game, okay? The competition is getting thicker. It's getting heavier. And you've probably noticed just as a consumer how much noisier the digital world is. And things that you did five years ago are not working like they used to. And the reason is because more marketers are becoming digital and social savvy. They're becoming independent and not having to rely so much on the Facebooks of the world to build brand awareness. They're learning how to integrate these things. And so you need to understand the digital branding trends that are happening in 2020. And it's not just so you can freak out and be like a deer in headlights saying, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm hosed. You're not hosed. You need to embrace the right trends for your business so that you can grow, so that you can better connect with your customers and so that you can be leading versus following and freaking out. So today I'm sharing with you 50 15 digital branding trends that you need to understand. And then you can pick and choose the things that are going to make the most sense for your brand so that you can achieve your goals. So we have a lot of amazing content to cover. Let's dig right in. The number one trend is that marketers and brands are streamlining and simplifying their digital presence. So gone are the days of only building your brand on rented land. So many marketers and brands spent loads of money and time, for example, on building their communities on Facebook years ago. And then all of a sudden, Facebook comes along and they say, you know what? Now we're going to charge you even more for you to have access to that community that you just built on Facebook. Now you're going to have to utilize our paid advertising platform to reach those same customers you just spent the last three years building community. So 
the past five to 10 years, so many marketers have been just taking masses of content and throwing it at the digital wall, hoping that it would stick and that somebody, their target customers would come along and say, that looks appetizing. Let me consume it. And hopefully they're going to buy from me. That's changing. Because the digital and social world has grown. It's expanded in depth and in breadth. And so there are so many places that you can go to reach your customer. You really have to streamline and focus. And most importantly, you need a home base. You need a place that people can come back to. You need that digital home base that your fans, your audience and your prospects can come to learn more about you, to know that you're in this for the long term, that you're just not trying to ride out and get rich on one of these social networks, but that you are there as a, an established business and brand to serve your audience value, to deliver the services that you promise. This is true also for the platforms that you own. So you may have multiple blogs, multiple websites, and over the years, you know, this may have got a little bit out of control. So you should not be embarrassed. You should stand proud in saying, I need to pivot a little bit. I need to streamline this. Maybe I don't need three websites. Maybe I need one. And we are doing this ourselves. So you're going to see some streamlining, even with social Zoom factor. We are going to be moving that home base, for example, to our agency site that's called the marketing nuts with a z.com. So very soon you are going to see all of the social Zoom factor podcasts are only going to be located there. Same thing goes for my personal online brand, right? I have pammarketingnut.com, but what I'm doing is I'm launching pam.online and that becomes my primary domain. So I spend a lot of time speaking and training and people are always asking me, Pam, how do I find you? And I usually say, do a Google search for me and pick your digital social flavor. But now I'm going to be able to say, simply go to pam.online online and they know they can get to everything that they need and want to consume that I create for them to help them grow. And we are partnered with a new company and they are a sponsor on this podcast. So I encourage you to check them out. You can go get your personal online domain at get.online slash Pam and use the coupon code Pam for a 90% savings on your first year of that domain. So that's why I really love using the Pam.online because it is different, it's unique, and it's really simple for people to find and remember. So go check it out. You know, you'll see how we are transitioning our sites over the coming months. We've already made some massive changes. We're taking an audience first approach to everything that we are doing and really just streamlining, you know, starting at those front pages. And then over the coming weeks, you're going to see a lot of changes that we're rolling out. And like I always say, I love taking you along for the journey. So as you you make these changes, as you streamline, do not be afraid to take your audience and your community with you. Let them learn from you. I'll be sharing with you the good, the bad, and the ugly, you know, as we make this transition. Because anytime you make a transition like this, there's impacts, right? SEO impacts. You have to train your audience and let them know that you're changing things. It's all the systems you have integrated. So it's not something you can just flip a switch and say, I'm streamlined. You need to crawl, walk, run and have a plan to do that. But make sure that you are building out that home base and streamlining that so that people can easily find you and that your brand presence can be as powerful and impactful as it possibly can be. The number two trend is that brands are really getting brave when it comes to digital and social. And I mentioned this at the beginning of this episode and that even industries and companies who maybe in the past were feeling left behind, they are now feeling the competition on their bottom line. And the old ways are not working 
like they used to. So even industries and marketers who may have lagged in the past are now beginning to experiment with new media formats, with the new features of some of the social networks and other platforms because they want to continue to increase brand awareness, to build relationships and trust and serve their audiences and customers so that they can continue to grow grow their business. So you're going to continue to see competition and that is going to drive brands becoming more brave online, which is going to drive more competition. So you may have not had to worry about some of your competition in the past because you're like, ah, they're like an old dinosaur. They're not doing anything on social and digital. And I'll tell you, we do a lot of training and consulting with clients of all sizes, and we're getting a lot of new clients who are coming to us saying, wow, We are feeling the impact now of competition like we haven't felt in years where they're seeing their competition starting with doing brand storytelling and creating micro moments that we'll talk about here in a little bit and leveraging new emerging technologies and building out or updating their website that they hadn't touched in 10 years. So it's time marketers, business owners, executives to level up your game. You need to embrace things like video and podcasting and take a look at interactive content and what are the emerging apps such as TikTok you need to be looking at if your audience is there? What paid media do you need to be embracing? You need to get bold and you need to get brave. Number three trend is brands are getting more human and we're seeing a lot of excitement around this. This is something I've done my entire career. I've been humanizing brands and so I get really excited excited about this. I'm excited to see even industries that in the past, you know, would only put out quote unquote brochures and, you know, the perfected corporate message are now actually wanting uh, help with brand storytelling and content creation. And how do I have a better conversation with my customers online? So I am so excited to see this trend. And did you know that 76% of individuals surveyed say they are more likely to trust content shared by a normal person over content shared by a brand. That stat is from everyone social. And that basically means your audience, your consumer, if you're in B2B, those people who are making that business decision, they are more going to trust content that's shared by your employees, by your team, over that perfected content that's created by your PR uh, team or your you know perfected brand messages. So brands must get human. And two of the key ways that you could do this, you know, fairly quickly, at least get started. Number one is personal branding. So if you have not already thought about how you are designing your personal brand, let me tell you something. You already have a personal brand, whether you've consciously designed that or not. Everything you say, everything you do, the way you behave, the way you dress, what you click like on, what how you comment, your digital body language, that's all part of your personal brand. Same thing goes for your employees. So I encourage you to really take a look at empowering your employees and making sure that you are all focused on building your personal brand and so that you can be representing your value proposition and what your company is about the best that you possibly can. You want to be living your brand, not just putting it on a corporate piece of content. And you can download my personal branding worksheet. Just go to the marketing nuts with a Z.com slash my brand. And I also just recently did a podcast on this. It was the episode right before this one. So episode 266, you can check that out. It's all about personal branding, but right along with personal branding is employee advocacy. And this is really where brands power up that awareness and the industry leadership and authority as well as build trust by empowering their employees. So this means you're helping them build their brand and then you're also helping them making it easier for them to share your content. And we'll hear from executives and leaders of organizations where they're afraid if they build up the personal brands of their sales team or of their marketing team or just some of their key employees, 
they're afraid if they build that up too much that then the employee is going to leave. And there is so much data and research out there that shows the exact opposite. If you invest in your employees, they're more going to want to stay with you. So you want your employees to be living and representing that value prop. And when you invest in them, they're going to invest in you and want to stay at your company longer. So there are a lot of tools and technology out there for employees advocacy as well. But don't get caught up in the hype with that and get overwhelmed with technology and go spend the next six six months working on, you know, learning what tool you're going to use for employee advocacy. Instead, just start simple. You know, start with that personal brand. Start with how are you representing yourselves? You know, start leveraging those micro and macro moments where you can get comfortable with an Instagram story, get comfortable, you know, in a short micro piece of content that you can, you know, have your employee take over and go behind the scenes for a day or show the events that you're hosting or attending locally or nationally. You can start small because you need to be where your customer is. You need to be there when they have a question, when they need you, or when they just want to be entertained. And it's a lot easier for you to be human and to be there when you need to be when you have a whole army of brand advocates that you are already investing in that work for your company. So we do a lot of training and workshops on this topic as well. So if you need any help here, we're happy to come in and train your team. We coach executives on building out their personal brands. And, you know, we train sales teams, marketing teams. We've worked in all sorts of B2B and B2C uh, markets in this space. So it can help you get going really quickly. Number four is that brands get conversational. And I also get very excited about this, but the days of thinking that you can push out one perfectly wordsmithed blog post a month, those days are over. Okay. A top goal now for brands should be to have an ongoing relationship with a client and a continual conversation is what is going to do that. It's going to help you earn trust, inspire, empower, and entertain because Content still rules when it comes to SEO, all right? If you are continuously creating good content, your your business is going to continually be able to benefit from that content. If it is good, powerful content that is attracting your right customer, that ROI is going to be continual and is going to continue to increase and improve. And you want to be thinking more about serial type of content, episodic type of content where you've seen me do that. You know, if you've been following this podcast uh, from the early days, it's hard to believe we we started this in 2014, but I have done a ton of serial type of content. It's episodic content where it builds, you know, one episode builds on the next episode and we have a content calendar and themes for that. So you're going to see this trend and you see even platforms like Instagram TV, also known as IGTV. They even have features that are supporting serial content where you can create your own serial and your own channel of content, video content, right on Instagram TV. And we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute. But 88% of B2B content marketers agree that creating content makes their audience view their organization as a credible and trusted resource. So you need to make sure that you are driving those conversations so that you can be driving authority for your brand. Number five trend is influencer marketing. So brands are going to continue to turn up the volume, engagement, and results with influencer marketing. So at its simplest definition, influencer marketing is a partnership between brands and people with influence. Don't overcomplicate it. And if you go deeper, it is a dynamic, living, breathing community where interactions, transactions, and relationships ignite between content creators, brands, and customers. So 
it's really where brands are tapping into what we call the OPC, other people's content and other people's community. And when you find the right people who have influence over the audience and the target customers that you're wanting to reach, that's where you can really leverage and grow faster and leverage digital media more than you can do if you try to do everything yourself, right? We is always greater than me when you're partnered with the right people. And we have been developing influencer marketing programs, micro influencer programs, and macro programs for brands since 2010, since I started our first agency. And now you're seeing influencer marketing really going mainstream, where even smaller businesses are learning how to tap into the power of communities, of the OPC, and working with local and national micro and larger influencers. And micro influencers that have a following between 10,000 and 50,000 have a 41.7% higher engagement rate than macro influencers that have 500 to a million followers. So you don't have to have these huge budgets to hire Kim Kardashian because a lot of people will follow the celebrities, but many of those fans are not connected with those celebrities at the heart So they're not taking action. They may not even be seeing their content because they're never engaging with them. But when you are a micro-influencer and you're out there, you know, and you're putting content out there on a regular basis and you have a decent-sized fan base, those influencers have people that regularly follow them, that trust them, and are taking action. So when it comes to influencer marketing, it doesn't have to be celebrity style. You can really just start to look at at a smaller level of those people that influence the audience that you are wanting to reach. And 68.8% of brands already leverage influencer content today on their websites, on their emails or social campaigns, if they're doing print advertising, app store descriptions, and then another 21.3% say that they plan to do it in the future if they're not already doing it. So pretty compelling data. Number six, marketers are getting a lot smarter when it comes to measurement and optimization. So this just means they're learning how to measure, tweak, rinse, repeat, which means they're they're optimizing, they're seeing what's working and they have more agility to improve performance. And this is why we're seeing increased competition that we talked about earlier. So again, you know, this is going to drive more evergreen type of content, more agile type of content where you can start to understand what's working and what's not working and do more of the good stuff. And so this means that that competition just gets heavier because marketers are getting smarter in optimization. Number seven is voice search. This one is also very exciting. So prepare your content for voice search. 50% of all searches will be voice in 2020, right? 55% of all American homes will own a smart speaker by 2022. 72% of people who own voice activated speakers say that their devices are used as part of their daily routines. Voice shopping is set to jump to 40 billion in 2022, and that is up from 2 billion today. So, voice search means people are using these devices and they're using their voice to search. For example, did you know that you can use your Alexa? device to listen to social zoom factor and you can simply say alexa listen to social media zoom factor podcast and it will bring up my latest episode for you and i listen to a lot of podcasts i find a lot of them right through alexa so just make sure that your content you are thinking of how would people ask to find a specific topic or find something out about you or find your name or your brand or whatever topics it is that you are talking about. Number eight, video takes a front and center stage. And this has been a trend for many years, but if you are not already on video, you've got to start using video. YouTube alone has seen a 34 
12.36% increase in engagement from 2018 to 2019. And that's primarily due to the whole industry shift toward video content. And YouTube was one of those companies that was at the forefront of that. And this is also a shift toward more dynamic content that we're going to see continue into 2022. 82.2% of marketers say that they will invest in more video content this year. And 49% of marketers say they will increase their brand presence on YouTube specifically. So when you think about video content, remember, perfection is the enemy of good. And sometimes really good is good enough. Your video content does not need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be long. It doesn't need to be 100% scripted. And like I mentioned earlier, even platforms like Instagram TV, IGTV, now has the ability for you to set up channels. So your content only needs to be a minute long. And you can set up a channel and host content on Instagram anywhere from a minute up to 60 minutes. And you can then you know, have a series of content, do that episodic content that we talked about earlier and do the same type of thing that you can also do on YouTube. So if you're new to video, you know, start with those micro moments, start with an Instagram story and then work your way up to Instagram TV and start a channel there. And then once you get more comfortable there, then you could start your YouTube channel. And we do this with a lot of our students and clients where it doesn't have to be you you go from zero video to having a full-on YouTube channel and expecting to have huge results with that. Crawl, walk, run with video can work really well. I've already shared with you eight of the top digital branding trends for 2020. I still have seven more. But before we dig into those, we need to hear a few words from our sponsor. Please give them a listen and I will be right back. to achieve success better than anyone else, you must stand out. And you don't always have to do extravagant things to make your mark. Sometimes taking care of the smaller yet significant details is enough to do the trick. For example, one of the first decisions you'll be making for your business or personal brand is deciding its domain name. A small detail, but it hosts amazing branding benefits. I am going to build my presence on a dot online domain. Dot online has a global appeal, is relevant, keyword rich, and most importantly, it tells your users that you were online and it helps you achieve the objective of standing out. Dot online can be used for your primary website, your blog, portfolio, or anything else you dare to dream up. The versatile nature of the domain extension makes it easy to adapt by any industry. To learn more, check out get.online slash Pam. Again, that's get.online slash Pam. I'm back. Okay, number nine digital branding trend for 2020 is visual search. So brands should already be using visuals in all aspects of their marketing. I know I've talked about this a ton on Social Zoom Factor podcast, but it is time to get serious with now not only visually appealing social posts, videos, and blog posts, but for search as well. Google, Pinterest, and Bing all have their own lens search capabilities. For example, Google Lens is a visual search engine by Google, which recognizes objects and landmarks through a camera app. So your consumers, particularly if you are in an industry where you have product, you have something visual that people can see and they're like, I want that. You need to make sure that you are tapping into the power of these searches and you were optimizing all of the images that you are using and you were placing them on the platforms that you need to be. Images are returned for 19% of search queries on Google. There are over 600 million visual searches on Pinterest each month alone. So you can't ignore this. And even if you're in a B2B market, we've been using visual search for 20 plus years where we optimize and make sure we have all of our metadata out there on our images and it comes up in search. And I'll tell you, we have had numerous leads where people have said they have found us because of an image search. So if you haven't thought about this in the past or you didn't know anything about it, just go Google 
visual search and start with Google. That's a good place to start maybe there in Pinterest, uh, depending on what industry you're in. Number 10 is brands will find their voice with podcasting. So podcasting is amazing. Podcasting rocks. And I hope that this podcast has brought you tremendous value. If you've been a longtime follower, I know I've had a lot of people that have come up to me and at events or reached out electronically and said, you know what, Pam, you saved my business or you helped me grow my business. You helped me start a business. You know, you have taught me so much. And so what is it that you could do to help other people? How can you have impact and change people's lives? Podcasting is an amazing platform to do that, to connect community. Maybe you would prefer that you interview people or that you bring experts on. And we're going to be doing a lot more with interviews over the coming year. And we have some big plans there, so stay tuned. But this is another reason, again, why voice search matters so much. Audio is the future. Video is the future. And you need to make sure that you are finding your voice. And podcasting is a great way for brands to even start putting themselves out there even before they do video. So maybe you have a radio voice more than you have a video comfort level of putting your face in front of video. We've helped a lot of people where they've started with podcasting and then they find their voice and then they are thinking, wow, I really need to now get on video. So if you've ever thought about doing a podcast, I'm telling you 2020 is the place to do it. And just make sure you have some proper guidance and that you can get do some of the research that you need and really launch it in a solid way. It doesn't have to be perfect, but do some research because it is a little bit overwhelming. There's some technology that you need to learn and you need to just do the right things and then you can really just succeed from the very start. Feel free to reach out to us if you need some help and we can get you going. Number 11 trend is that content becomes more interactive. So this means things like Instagram uh, stories. So they have the ability to add in polls. You can do an ask me anything where people can submit questions to you. You can have people vote on content. You know, platforms like Twitter and Facebook, they have a lot of these same features there. So when you're creating content, don't just think about it and how can I blast out content? content to the world, really be thinking about how could I make this a conversation? We talked about that earlier in this episode. How could I make this interactive? How could I make this an ongoing conversation? Maybe you're going to take insights and questions that you get from your community and then bring them onto the platform and into the content that you're creating. How can you get them to vote on maybe features or upcoming episodes? You know, just get creative with that. And it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. Keep it simple. Number 12 trend is that brands get personal and create memorable experiences. So this means in order to get personal and in order to create an experience that is memorable for your audience, you've got to take an audience marketing first approach where you, the number one thing you focus on before anything else is your audience. You don't do anything until you know and understand the behaviors, the beliefs, the attitudes of your audience. Knowing just the demographics, how old they are, where they live, how much they work, that is no longer enough. If you're wanting to compete in 2020 and beyond, you've got to know your audience. And uh, we have a lot of resources available for that. We do a lot of work with our clients in this space and helping them do research and focus groups. You can start by downloading. We have a free worksheet that we just updated. Go to themarketingnuts.com slash audience. And it is an audience worksheet that will help you prioritize your core audiences and begin to segment those so you can really be you know, creating content and developing strategies that helps you connect with them in a meaningful and memorable, relevant way because relevance sells. Number 13, brands embrace automation. So a lot of people up to this point and marketers have been afraid to leverage automation, but we are really seeing a trend now where now they're thinking, okay, There are some specific ways that I can more automate my marketing. 
And, you know, a great way to start is maybe streamlining your communications, better serving your customers, uh, using something like a Facebook messenger, direct messaging, uh, maybe text messaging, text marketing, but leveraging automation. And you can, you know, have an automated follow-up funnel where when somebody subscribes to your brand to get a piece of information, then you can have a follow-up set of uh, communication that goes to them to help guide them through digesting that content. But remember when you're leveraging automation, always make sure that there's an easy opt-out. So once they subscribe, don't lock them in forever. And a lot of times, you know, brands will keep spamming and spamming people through an email newsletter, for example. But it's okay to let somebody unsubscribe. Not only is it the law that you must let them unsubscribe, but you also need to know that if you're continuously putting out good content, they'll be back, right? You will be amazed once you're uh, publishing valuable, relevant content, how many subscribers you may see that stay on your email list for years or a decade. We have people that have been subscribed to our email list for 10 years, okay? They they haven't left once. And then we also have some that leave and then they come back. They come back a lot. So embrace that automation, but make it an easy entry and an easy exit. Number 14 is vanity metrics take a back seat to results. And I am so happy to see this shift. And I was so excited when I saw Instagram actually start testing, removing public likes of content because that is a step in the right direction. The days of creating content to impress people that you don't even like, I mean, think about how crazy that is. Like when you're creating content for your peers and because you want to get likes on it, You need to be focused on your audience. You need to know the behaviors of your audience. And we have always focused on real measurable results and encouraged our clients to do so. Uh, You can leverage, you know, automated fake robots to like your content and engage on your behalf on Instagram, for example. But the people who have been doing that, it's starting now to come back and bite them in the behind because now they're losing followers because they were all robots to begin with. They are, you know, not, having the real engagement that they were faking like they had. So vanity metrics, you don't need. You need real results and just make sure that you are choosing the right key performance indicators to measure success, defining what success looks like. I love to get geeky and the data. ROI is, you know, our name and our game. So number 15, this is the last one, last but not least, and so very important. Community is still king and always will be. So other people's community, other people's content, OPC, you know me, you know that song. And uh, you can never go wrong by investing in communities and the human beings within them. Technology, social networks, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat, Periscope, you name them. They'll come and they'll go. But here's the thing. When you build community, they will follow you no matter where you go. So focus on people, focus on humans. Even with all these trends that we talked about today, all 15 of them, every one of them should be focused on getting more connected and relevant and inspiring your audience. Like I always say, it's inspire, connect, achieve. And when you inspire your audiences to connect with you with a goal of helping them achieve their goals, you achieve your goals by default. So there you have it in a nutshell, 15 digital branding trends that you must pay attention to. Trust me, pay attention to these trends in 2020. Figure out which ones you need to embrace to help you move your business forward, become better connected to your community, and most importantly, achieve your business and life goals. That's a wrap. If you're ready to Zoom your business and Zoom your life, then don't let the end of this episode be the end of your journey. Visit socialzoomfactor.com slash zoom for incredible free resources and guides. And be sure to join the Social Zoom Factor mailing list so you never miss an episode. We'll see you next time on Social Zoom Factor.